compliment of Jeffrey Barker from the soloist for the Nielsen Flute Concerto, and we just thought it would be fun to share some things about the piece with you. Sure. What is something that's been surprising or fun about this week with us? Um, hmm. Well, it's or not fun. <laughs> I just want to hear. Everything. I would say I would say it's been. Uh, fun to kind of figure out all the challenges involved with putting this piece together in general, but also putting it together with this orchestra where we have the great advantage but also challenge of not having a conductor. Um, so it's kind of all up to us to figure out how to trade our little melodies from one person to another and coordinate everything and make sure that we're all kind of thinking the same thing at the, at the same time. So that's been both fun and challenging, and I think that's going to be kind of one of the most exciting things about the performance, is no knowing that we're just kind of on our own. Yes, and it feels so different just being able to perform in that chamber music sense with you, and it's just really fun, and you're so incredibly easy to follow, oh, good. which is <laughs> lovely. And, and you all as well. I can tell that you know how to do this. Like, this is what you do as an OCO. So you for me, it's that. yeah, for me, it's a, a new thing to play with orchestra that functions in that way, but you have all your little tricks and techniques for making it work. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear we're, we're making it seem easier than maybe it feels, but <laughs> but it, it's fun to be able to collaborate with a soloist when there's no conductor because it's just such a different kind of relationship. Yeah. Um, and nothing against conductors, but just it's just such an intimate and um, different experience, and mm -hmm. it really does feel like we're playing chamber music together, but also on a broader scale. And I think that that's what's so fun too, is to yeah. have that also that new perspective of like the orchestra versus the, just the chamber music and like mixing it all together. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're all making musical decisions together. It doesn't feel like I'm dictating it and it doesn't feel like there's any one person dictating it. We're talking about it and it's kind of like evolving and coming together in real time as we do the rehearsals. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's so exciting um, to, like you said, have it evolve because you never really know what's going to happen. And I think that that's the excitement too mm -hmm. with it and like yeah. the scary part as well. Yeah, but and that'll keep going all the way through the performances. Yes. It'll still be kind of evolving in our minds and who knows what will happen. Yeah, I always feel like when we perform that we're just doing a type of walk without a net and um, but what I'm realizing is that we're each other's net yeah. in this really cool way that we're holding each other up during transitions and during the times when we would normally feel, feel fearful we're able to just like use a lot of body language and, mm -hmm. and like speak with our instruments in a way that like tells the other people what we're doing and like shares in that experience which is it just makes it really fun and exhilarating, I think, for me. Yeah. And I would think that having to um, like be responsible for all of that as a group of musicians during the rehearsal, it means by the time we get to the concert, we're gonna know the piece better than you necessarily would if you were playing in a, a more traditional orchestra. Like everyone's gonna kind of know the piece inside and out because we've all had to figure out all the moving pieces during the rehearsals. Absolutely. Yeah, I think most everyone has cues written in their parts and just like knows the score. I, I certainly study my score for hours and of course in regular orchestra playing, I am guilty of just jumping in and practicing my own part and not really having the time or taking the time or needing to take the time to really learn the score in and out. So it is, it's actually a really big pleasure and a huge opportunity to just learn these works in and out and yeah. very deeply. And of course, if we played it again, we would know it better. I would know it even better next time, but it's, it's a really fun thing to experience. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Is there anything about the piece that you want to share with people or? Um, you know, this is a, a piece that I've, like, obviously I've worked on as, you know, since I was a student and uh, practiced so many hours and worked on with my various teachers. Um, and to get to do it with an orchestra is a, is a totally new experience. Um, what I love about this piece, it, I feel like there's nothing that really sounds like it in the flute repertoire. It's kind of its own thing. Um, 
And Nielsen is a composer that really fascinates me. I don't think anyone really sounds like Nielsen. Um, and what I understand about Nielsen is that he was really writing for very specific people. Um, the, you know, the orchestra that he was very familiar with and, and working with in Copenhagen, uh, he's kind of like, he knew the personalities of these different musicians and he's sort of writing for their specific uh, strengths and weaknesses and also the interpersonal stuff. I don't know, it's all stuff that I kind of am assuming because I haven't found anything in my research that spells out these stories really specifically. Uh, but in this particular piece, there is um, a lot of interplay between the, the flute and the trombone, and also with the flute and the timpani. Uh, clarinet often has these kind of parts that interweave with the flute. And I don't know the specific stories, but in my head, there's these, it's not just instruments playing, it's these relationships and conversations going on and often arguments. Um, I wonder if maybe there were some like differences of opinion between the trombone and flute specifically in that orchestra, because it doesn't always feel friendly when we're yeah. kind of talking to each other yes. in this piece. Um, so again, I don't really know the like really detailed story there, but it just it seems like there's a lot going on there, and that's what I really have fun with in this piece is kind of uh, seeing these relationships evolve throughout the piece and these conversations happen. It's so different from, like you said, from other, even just other concertos for any other instrument. And I, in some ways, just hearing you talk about this with the trombone and like all the different, almost fights that people are having or just arguments or miscommunications or whatever it is, um, it sometimes reminds me of our rehearsals <laughs> um, because this is sort of how we do it. We go back and forth and I'm yeah. not saying everybody's arguing all the time at all, but just that it, it is conversational, and I mm -hmm. think that that's, it's kind of a fun piece to play because it's kind of fun to be able to express our character yeah. in that way during rehearsals mm -hmm. um, and just speak up and say like, oh, I don't like this going, or let's try this, or, you know, whatever, yeah. and we communicate with each other like that. Um, yeah, and as far as like letting the personalities come out, I think a lot of concertos, it's sort of soloist and orchestra, maybe every once in a while there's some beautiful solos that an individual gets to play, but mostly it's kind of this conversation between a soloist and the full orchestra, and this piece feels different because it is these conversations between individual instruments. So, uh, someone in the orchestra was telling me before the first rehearsal that they feel like this is a concerto for orchestra, not a concerto for flute and orchestra, mm -hmm. and I think of like the Bartok concerto for orchestra where each instrument is featured at some point, and it feels kind of like that. Like, for sure the flute is the main soloist, but Everyone in the orchestra is a soloist at some point in time, and it's uh, the way that those different personalities come out that's, that makes it interesting. Definitely. Do you have anything you want to share about um, sort of your purpose as a musician? What drives you? What inspires you? Keep you practicing, keep playing, what you enjoy? Um, you know, my real passion and the thing I've kind of focused on for a long time now is to play in an orchestra, and my main job is playing in the Seattle Symphony. Um, so this feels like uh, a wonderful opportunity because I've had to be kind of so like single-minded on that, and that's still what I, that feels like home whenever I'm sitting in the middle of the orchestra playing that role of playing this one particular part in a you know, 90-piece orchestra. Um, so that's kind of my passion, but uh, to get to do something that's a little different from that is really, really fun. A little bit scary, I would say. Um, I don't get to play as a soloist with an orchestra all that often, um, and it's a totally different kind of mindset and skill set. Um, so I think for me, you know, I've got like this like sort of safety of the job that I know the best, and I want to try to, whenever I have an opportunity, kind of break out of that and play with other groups, not just play with the Seattle Symphony. Um, and NOCO is a group that I've kind of been a fan of for a long time, um, ever since I heard that, that you all existed, um, and the way that you function, and that it's, uh, you function without a, a conductor, and that it's musician-run, and I kind of love, the more I learn about NOCO, the more I, I love this organization, and I'm a donor, and, uh, you know, 
buy tickets when I'm not the soloist and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, I want to be able to kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, have these relationships with other organizations in town, not just the Seattle Symphony, and get to make music in different venues and for different communities. And so this is kind of perfect for that. It kind of gets me out of my comfort zone and it gives me a chance to work with one of my favorite orchestras in town and get to do something totally different than my day job. Thank you for saying that. That's really kind. And we just, it's been a pleasure to work with you. And thank you for talking today. Yep. And thank uh, you for playing with us. I can't yeah, wait for the concerts. It's a big honor and uh, it's uh, been my pleasure as well. And it's going to be a really fun weekend.